for over 100 years. From the time Hong Kong was a little fishing port, many of its people have depended on the ocean for their livelihood. At that time, Hong Kong was less populated. Most people lived in buildings only a few stories high and without flushing toilets. Toilet waste was placed at the front door and collected every night by the night soil lady. When the economy took off in the 70s, it was the deep, natural channel of Victoria Harbour, which made Hong Kong an important international trading center. With the dramatic increase in population and economic activities, a large volume of sewage is produced every day, which would pollute the ocean if not treated properly. generation of sewage and its treatment are closely related to our daily lives. Each day while we cook, wash, clean or go to the washroom, each of us produces more than 300 liters of sewage, enough to fill 16 large distilled water bottles. Each day about 2,600,000 cubic meters of sewage are produced, enough to fill 1,400 Olympic swimming pools. Sewage will first flow down the building's wastewater pipes to the public sewer network and via pumping stations to sewage treatment plants of various levels for treatment. This public sewer network runs a total length of over 1500 kilometers, which roughly equals the distance of 44 train rides from Hong Hong to Lo Wu. Our methods of sewage treatment have become increasingly sophisticated. Nowadays, there are four levels of sewage treatment. They are the preliminary treatment, the chemically enhanced primary, secondary, and tertiary treatments. Most of the sewage screening plants on both sides of Victoria Harbor were built in the 60s. They've been providing preliminary treatment to sewage from these areas. Grits of over 0.25 millimeters and suspended solids of over 6 millimeters in diameter are removed. Currently, about 30% of Hong Kong's sewage receives preliminary treatment before being discharged into the sea through submarine outfalls. In order to improve the water quality in Victoria Harbor, the Drainage Services Department implemented the Harbor Area Treatment Scheme in 1994. Stage one of the project was completed in late 2001 and is now in full service. To avoid conflict with various underground public utilities, we make use of a deep tunnel system. To convey the preliminary treated sewage to the central treatment plant on Stonecutters Island, where it receives chemically enhanced primary treatment or CEPT. Chemicals such as ferric chloride and polymer are added to sewage to enhance flocculation and precipitation. The settled pollutants are collected and dewatered to form sludge cakes, which are then transported to landfill sites in sealed containers. Finally, the treated effluent will be discharged through a submarine outfall to the Western Harbor. The Stonecutters Island Sewage Treatment Works treats about 1,400,000 cubic meters of sewage every day, half of that produced by Hong Kong's population. The CEPT process adopted effectively removes the pollutants, including 80% of suspended solids and 70% of biochemical oxygen demand. It is indeed a cost-effective sewage treatment system. Most new towns in the new territories are provided with modern biological treatment plants, also known as secondary treatment plants. 
Today, about 17% of Hong Kong's sewage receives biological treatment. After the sewage is screened, it enters the primary sedimentation tanks, where small suspended solids are removed. The settled sewage will then flow into the aeration tanks, where the microorganisms will decompose the organic matters in sewage. Compressed air is continuously fed into the tanks to promote the growth of microorganisms. After disinfection, the treated effluent is discharged to rivers or inland waters. The Drainage Services Department built Hong Kong's first tertiary sewage treatment plant in Nongping on Lantau in 2005 in order to protect the water quality in the country park and water gathering ground for Shekpik Reservoir. Sewage from households, restaurants, tourist attractions and toilets in Nongping will be brought here for tertiary treatment. After screening, and biological and sedimentation processes, the effluent will undergo tertiary treatment in the dual media filter for removal of the remaining traces of pollutants. Finally, after disinfection by ultraviolet lights to remove pathogenic organisms and bacteria, the effluent is completely purified. As the tertiary treated effluent is of very high quality, it can be reused. This reclaimed water is now being used for flushing public toilets in Yongping and the cable car terminal, as well as for controlled irrigation and rearing aquarium fish. Like all other public utilities, the sewage collection, treatment and disposal system needs to be upgraded continuously to ensure good performance. Since the late 80s, the government has implemented a sewerage master plan program. The territory was divided into 16 catchments where the sewerage systems are upgraded on a catchment by catchment basis. The drainage services department also has a preventive maintenance program to inspect the sewer network regularly so as to ensure they are free of blockages. The government enacted the Water Pollution Ordinance in 1980 to control water pollution in Hong Kong and to prosecute offenders for discharging wastewater illegally. Being a member of the community, we can foster an ideal living environment by reducing water pollution and avoiding discharge of sewage into stormwater drains. You can also report on improper sewer connections and illegal discharge cases in order to help the authority take necessary enforcement actions. Finally, based on a polluter pays principle, we are encouraged to save water under the sewage charging scheme. Sewage charges are collected to cover the operation and maintenance costs for providing sewage services. While funding for sewage infrastructure and any expenses in excess will come from the public coffers. Prosperity and pollution do not necessarily go hand in hand. It takes a committed community to adopt a forward-looking strategy in combating water pollution. Only with the government's continuous effort and the support of the people can we sustain an ideal living environment. And a harbour that is as clean as nature intends it to be.